and welcome to the Church of St. Mary. We welcome all visitors and members of this area of faith community. God has gathered us together to renew our efforts in sharing the life of Christ and being the love of Christ. Let us stand and introduce ourselves to those we do not know and greet the presence of Christ. Our gathering song is number 532 in your hymnals or on the screens. Praise the Lord, ye heavens. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. With Good evening, everyone. Good evening. We gather here at God's table to be fed and nourished by word and sacrament. We come to open our hearts to the presence and the power that comes to us through the gift of Christ's forgiveness and mercy. So as we gather in prayer, as we lift our voices in praise to the God who has created us, sustains us, and saves us, let us offer to him our need for forgiveness by acknowledging our sins. Lord Jesus, you are forgiveness for the sinner. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are bread for the hungry. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are hope for the world. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We pray.
take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary. Flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying. But never again prophesy in Bethel. For it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord.
kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring forth from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Let us see your kindness, O Lord, Grant us your salvation, O God. You yourself will give these gifts. Our land shall yield its fruit. Justice shall walk before you and salvation along your way. Let us see your kindness, O Lord. Grant us your salvation, O God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ in heaven and on earth. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. In him, you also, who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance toward redemption as God's possession, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. He sent them out and instructed them to take nothing with them on the journey except a walking stick, the sandals on their feet, and the shirt on their back. Some friends of mine who are grandparents decided this past spring that they wanted to take three of their grandchildren and their parents on a seven-day vacation to the Black Hills. Notice the order in which I put the priority of who they wanted to take to the Black Hills. They wanted to take their three grandchildren and okay their parents with them to the Black Hills for a seven-day vacation. They chose the Black Hills because, of course, it involved not having to get on a plane, not having to deal with airports. It was just simply an eight-hour drive in a minivan all together. And those same friends of mine invited me to go along. (laughs) Thanks be to God, my schedule was already busy. I had a wedding, I had a couple of other things already in the calendar, and so I had to graciously decline. Imagine me in a minivan, eight of us, by the way, three of them under the age of 12, for eight hours across South Dakota. Thank God for celibacy. (laughs) But these friends of mine, grandparents, shared with me the story, of course, of these three grandchildren. Like, they are psyched. They are stoked. They are so excited about the possibility of going with Grandma and Grandpa out to the Black Hills, even if it means eight hours in a minivan. So they're excited, and their parents are trying to teach them responsibility. And so the parents say to their three children now, you need to pack your bag for the trip. But remember... You need to pack light because there's going to be seven of us in the van and there's not a lot of room for luggage. So the three children undertook the task of packing their own bags. The eldest, her name is Annie. Actually, her name really isn't Annie. I make up names to protect the guilty. (laughs) But Annie, the oldest, is 12 years old. And she went about the task of deciding what would be in the bag by making a list, and she would prioritize it, and she would cross it out, and she would reprioritize her list, and she would do this daily, and she did it daily for nearly two weeks. And the entire time she would do it, she would have this very loud sigh as she was trying to put this list of what would go into the bag together. And then there was the second one, Katie. She's why she's seven. And her approach to packing lightly was she just jammed as much as she could into her backpack, and then she would start crying because she realized that she didn't have any clothes yet in the backpack. (laughs) And her parents told me she did that for an entire week every single day. And then there was their son, Peter, soon to be five years old. 
And his mother and dad asked him, Peter, do you have your bag packed? He said, I don't need a bag. I don't need a bag, mom and dad. And so he went to his bedroom and he came back out. And in one hand, he showed them his Batman action figure. And in the other hand, he had a pair of Spider-Man underwear. This is all I need, Mom and Dad. And of course, they tried not to laugh like some of you just did. And they looked at Peter and they said, are you sure that's all you're going to need for seven days out in the Black Hills? And he said, well, you know, Mom and Dad, you've always said God's the boss. So I packed him first. And then Mom and Dad said, well, so where did you put God then? And with his hand holding the Batman action figure, he pointed right to his chest. I packed God first. Now, truth be told, I'm guessing his grandparents and his mother and dad and his two older sisters were hoping that he would take more than the Batman action figure and a pair of Spider-Man underwear on a seven-day vacation. And I'm sure he did. But something tells me Peter's journey out to the Black Hills and back probably yielded more fruit. Because isn't it true that life and the journey that you and I take through life is not so much about what we have on the journey, but who we have along the journey? It's not so much about what we have. You know, the food, the bag, the extra shirt, the extra pair of socks. It's not about what we have on the journey of life that matters as much as who we have. It's the reason why Jesus said to the disciples as he sends them out two by two in today's gospel, take nothing with you on the journey except a walking stick, the sandals on your feet, and the shirt on your back. Because Jesus wanted the disciples, as he wants you and I, to realize that we need to trust. We need to trust in the one who is always with us on this journey. The one who loves us so much that he chose to send you and I his son. And this son of his has chosen to get into the minivans called our life. As crowded and as packed and as jammed and as prioritized and pre-prioritized as it has become. And it is God that chooses to find a place in the midst of all that stuff called your life and mine. But the only way we will recognize that God is even in the minivan called our life is that we, of course, have to realize that we need to to declutter. We need to reprioritize. We need to stop jamming stuff in there. And we need to recognize that sometimes we just need an action figure and and a pair of underwear. And then we go on our way. But notice, Jesus sends them out two by two. It's best not to go alone. The world is too frightening and it's too scary. And most importantly, we need one another to be able to help us along the way. It means that we have to be willing, likewise, to go out. You see, it's not enough to be a disciple of Christ in the comforts of our own home or even in our own neighborhood or even in our own community. It's not enough to simply say, you know, I'm comfortable here. I don't want to meddle in other people's business. I don't want to be necessarily a part of other people's lives. I just want to, I just want to tend to myself and the people that are closest to me. As important as that is, my friends, Jesus demands that you and I are willing to get into the minivans of other people's lives. And we need to travel with them. And as we travel with one another, we need to share the good news. We need, like the disciples, to be able to tell one another what we have come to know about Jesus Christ. We need to share with other people the power of his life and his love and his forgiveness and his presence in our life. We need to be willing to recognize each and every day that as we are set out on the journey, 
like Peter, we need to pack God first. And where do we put him? Well, where he already is, right here in the depths of our heart. So as we come to the Lord today, to be fed, to worship him, to be nourished by him, to be forgiven from him, why, we come recognizing that this journey of ours is an incredible one. And it involves discipleship. And discipleship requires that we, that we pack lightly. Because it doesn't matter what we have on the journey. What matters is who we have. And who do we have? Well, we have God. We have the gift of his son. We have the power of his life and his love. And so, are you ready? Let us get into the minivans of our life and one another's. And as a community of believers, let us travel. Let us share the good news. Let us cure the sick. Let us preach the gospel always. And when necessary, let us use words. Let us, my friends, be willing to take with us on the journey all that we need. And I could just imagine, imagine that debriefing that took place after the disciples returned to our Lord in today's gospel. I can imagine Jesus asking those 12 disciples just like he asks you and I every day. Were you lacking anything? And I bet the disciples said, and I hope you and I can say, nothing. We are lacking nothing. To which Jesus smiles and says, Ah. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is set it into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer in prayer and in the needs of this church gathered here today for the church that filled with the holy spirit we continue the work of christ by speaking out for justice and equality we pray lord hear our prayer for our country that we stand firm to protect religious freedom by becoming educated and involved we pray lord hear our prayer for the struggling the hungry and the poor, for those suffering the effects of war, illness, or addictions, that they may see the face of Christ through our actions and prayers, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for farm safety and favorable weather to produce an abundant harvest to feed the world. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dying and the deceased, remembering Wayne and Delmer Zimmerman and Allison Hansen, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the strength to live simply and the grace to trust that God will fill our every need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, we gather as your people. We bring to you the gifts of bread and wine and the gift of ourselves. Change and transform these gifts into the living presence of your Son, that we might bring your good news to the waiting world. Hear us as we pray, answer these petitions according to your will, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. But invite our children to bring their offering forward. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 584 in your book or on the screens. In Christ there is no east or west. In Christ there is no east or west. In him no south or but one great family bound by love throughout the whole wide earth. In him shall true hearts everywhere their high communion find. His service is the golden cord close by. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, with all the clergy and with all your people. Remember also our sisters and our brothers, who have died in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As we await the coming of God's kingdom, we continue to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion song is number 356 in your books or on the screens, I am the bread of life. to me. 
my flesh for the life of the world. And if you eat of this bread, you shall live forever. You shall live forever. And I will raise you up. And I will And I will raise you up on the last day. Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son.
Let us pray. Having received these gifts, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reminder this coming Friday is the Candyway County Relay for Life, and so we invite you, if you're able to, uh, to join those who are either living with cancer, the survivors of cancer and their families. Um, this coming Friday, again, it's at the middle school track. We invite you to be a part of that if you're able to. Also, there's still time to purchase luminaries. I know Joan Kuhn is available tonight. If you would like to purchase one of those, she'll be in the gathering space uh, to help you with that. Um, our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Our sending forth song is on the screens only, Go to the World. Go to the world, go into all the earth, go preach the cross where Christ renews life's word. Baptizing as the sign of our rebirth. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go to the to joyous day as soon